What is up, new world? Welcome to Red Digits Game Master Coaching. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about getting to level 200 in stone cutting. I'm going to show you guys what to make, what uh, route to take to actually get gems, and then what cool things that I found to make money after I got 200 stone crafting. But pre 150, I just end up making gems into brilliant uh, gems, and then I cut the brilliant gems. Um, and that's what I'll do until I get to 150. It actually goes really quickly. And then once I get to 150, I will change those brilliant gems into pristine and then cut those pristine. And then one thing I did too, because it starts to slow down slightly, as you're getting to around 180, is I'll come into the market, I will search pristine uh, gems. It doesn't matter, you can just click on one. And then if you hit back, it'll bring you to this menu. I don't want cut. Uh, so it's under raw resources and then you'll go to raw gemstones um, and then you can scroll down and then what I ended up doing is I ended up going through all of these starting at pristine ambers and looked at the price these are 79 these are 62 some of these will not be used very often most of the ones that are used for specific builds especially since now a lot of people are getting that 600 gear so they're starting to get the armor that they need and starting to throw gems into these things so a lot of these gems are coming off the market because people are just buying them but the uh the ones that i found were like the sapphire the sapphire was like hella cheap on my server i ended up buying out a ton of them but I would definitely get ahead of this because this has been already happening on our server quite a bit. Um, that all the ones that you can buy off the market that are cheap, buy those and use those to, or just cut those. Um, and then you can do the same thing with Brilliant as well. Some of these are super expensive. But these ones that are like 12 gold each, you can easily just buy 19 of them. It's 300 gold, it's not that bad. Whenever you, especially if you guys have done the refining walkthroughs that I've done, you'll be making 10K every single 24 hours. So spending $300 isn't gonna be a whole lot. Um, and then you can just cut those or build them into the ones that you need to if you're starting to run out of these resources. And you do this on top of going out and um, and gathering gems from these mining things. And over time, you'll be able to sell all your excess from the route and you'll be able to actually use that money to buy more gems or just have a st more stack of money um, so that that way you can buy moats and the next thing i wanted to talk about was moats um, whenever you're doing moats i ended up just coming in here and buying out like a thousand of these and just going through buying a thousand as i got up to 150 um, so that that way whenever i went to arcana i would just go to arcana change them into wisp change them in it because you get an excess every single time you craft them so i ended up doing that changing them into essences and then once i got to 150 i started changing them into quince and then i started to cut and and to make the pristine uh, gems. So that's kind of what I did for gem crafting. All right, and I made another guide and I will post a link to that in the description if you have not got to 150 stone cutting, which is fairly easy to do. 100 to 150, you'll obviously be building the, um, if you can get the, the brilliant gems from these pickups, um, you'll be cutting those. And then from your iron, from all that stuff, you'll be getting flawed. And then if you check out that guide or if you've already seen it, the routes for gold and silver is going to give you a massive amount of these regular just emeralds and diamonds and jaspers and everything like that so if you guys need to collect more of the regular ones so that you can you can build them into brilliant then i would suggest doing that route consistently for a little bit and then hopping over and doing or you can um do the refresh time of this route. I was getting respawns for the big nodes for about 40 minutes and then the small ones were every like 20 minutes. So this route takes about 25 minutes. So the small ones should be back. The big ones should be back on the second time around. So just so you guys have that information and then you, what you can do is just wait for the whole 40 minutes and then go and do a quick uh, gold route over and cutlass keys and then knock out a route of that and then come back over here and do this if you wanna do that. I want to show you guys the route that I used to get pristine and brilliant gems like crazy just using a mining luck set. This runs on the west coast of Reekwater, um, and there's aura calcum and platinum veins in this run. There's a couple of honey trees as well if you're looking to level up your furnishing. You'll find uh, quite a bit of these little beetles up here as well. So I'll give you some air moats or the things to actually get your uh, potions to get your gypsum. 
But I wanted to make this video for you guys that are over level 60 and you're wondering what can you do during this February update period, whether it's just not content update, it is solely just bug fixes. Um, but I wanted to get this out for you guys so you guys can start doing this to make dungeon entrance orbs and to actually be able to get those cooldowns that you need to be able to do that. And also some different uh, money-making ideas that I actually got while I was doing stone cutting. So, and give you guys an idea of just what um, you guys are gonna be able to get out of your aptitude boxes too once you hit level 200. Uh, this is the platinum route that I do. It is in Reek Water. Um, right down here is a teleport shrine. Uh, I end up starting there. I'll walk south and grab this uh, Org Halcom right here. There's an Org Halcom below this group right here that I'll grab, and then I'll walk up and grab this one to the west on the very bottom that you see, and then walk up north, grab that one, and then grab those two. After that, I'll walk up to this uh, Platinum Vein right up here. Um, it's a little over the edge of the cliff, so you'll see it if you look over it um, once you get into the area. And then after that, I will go back up north into this area. You'll kind of go in between the um, the rocks um, onto this ledge and then you'll hang the, uh, or you'll stay on the right side of the ledge and grab these first nodes so you grab these um, and then you'll you'll cut over to the west grab this one and then go north grab that one go north again jump off the cliff a little bit grab these and then come back around the edge of this and then come back up here to this wolf cave and then there will be a cluster of platinum veins uh, platinum nodes here as well and then after that I'll go north um, northeast into these um, into these aura calcum nodes I'll grab uh, both of those and then I'll go back to the northwest start up here grab these go into this opening grab these two jump back down here grab these and then after that I'll walk up this path grab these um, stay along the right uh, the right hand side here um, and grab these try not to aggro um, the enemies, there might be a couple of enemies that you end up aggroing that you might have to kill to get this platinum vein, but that's it. Um, and then after that, I'll go north, grab this cluster, and then I will go straight west, climb up the side of this little uh, hill. Um, and I will grab this one at the top of the hill, start going back down the hill to the west, grab this one, and then jump over this little ledge. Grab this one down here, jump over another little ledge. And grab this one and then I'll come south and finish it out right there. And then after that, I end up... Uh, recalling and setting my um, I end up setting my recall spawn point to reek water before I do this run so that that way at the end of this run I can just recall to the city and then uh, fast travel back out to this this shrine out here and then start it all over so that's what I do to get brilliant gems and pristine gems um, and then just make sure you have a luck gear set on whenever you're doing that that mining luck gear set So this is about what you're gonna get for a run for doing this platinum route. So around 20 ish uh, brilliant gems you should be getting um, Maybe a little bit less just depends on RNG um, and then you'll end up getting a ton of platinum more You'll be able to get some iron out there with some flawed gems where I got these flawed gems from. And the aura calcum, there's also aura calcum there. I got quite a bit of leather just from collecting on my way through this. Got some uh, wire fiber and then got 71 beeswax. 71 beeswax, pretty decent. It sells for a decent amount. Of, I think it's like three gold per, or five gold per on the market right now. So um, all these things is gonna be massively helpful either for you making money or stone cutting. And um, also you get these lightning beetles, quite a bit of the lightning beetles and the air motes whenever you're doing this as well. And the lightning beetles, they were selling for quite a bit. They're going for about 30 per, so that's, I don't know, like 180 gold um, per run, depending on how many of these you do or whatever. I ran through this twice and I think that's where I got all of these from because whenever you're running this route, the small ores spawned faster and the bigger ores was obviously spawn slower. So if any of the ore is gone whenever I first go out, then I'll teleport back to the, the shrine and then I will um, go back through the route because by the time I'm running back through, all of those ores will be back up and you can consistently do this route over and over again because the small ores are gonna spawn pretty much at the end of this by the time you recall. Setting your, um, your home teleport or I forget what it's called, your respawn point at uh, Reek Water is gonna be super helpful because then you can teleport back to Reek Water and then teleport out to the shrine and then go again in that circle and then 
you'll usually be the one that starts to set the pace in this. If you're consistently doing it uh, time after time after time, people will stop going for that work outcome because they'll see you out there. So just want to share that with you guys. These are the different ways to be able to make money from this route specifically is the beeswax. I'll actually show you guys the beeswax as well. Beeswax going for 250. So um, it's not a ton of money, 140 gold ish for being able to sell these. So just so that, that way you guys know what you can make uh, money on while you're doing this route. Once you guys do these cuts though, um, one thing that I forgot to do, I just didn't really care too much about jewel crafting, but it's definitely something that I'm having to do now. So as you're doing this, keeping your cut gems, and then it's going to give you a longer period of being able to build up gems and stuff like that. Cause every single time. So if you're making a pristine amulet or a brilliant amulet, it's going to, once you salvage that amulet, it's going to change it into the gem of the lower tier. So if I have a brilliant, it's gonna change it into a regular gem. So if I make a brilliant onyx amulet, it's gonna give me an onyx whenever I salvage this. And then I, I end up using that and stacking those up. So I'll make a bunch of these brilliant amulets, salvage them all, and then they'll go back to regulars. And then I will do the, the refining process again of changing the regular gems into the brilliant gems and then cutting those and then making these again. And then this kind of, this will keep your jewel crafting at about the same level as your stone cut and it'll give you the ability to just keep using your gems for XP. I made a, a brilliant diamond earring just to show you guys what this looks like. So you just end up salvaging it and it says salvaging this item returns one of one diamond. So you end up getting a diamond back for using it and then it just goes back in here and then you just end up using this for doing the rest of that craft. I wanted to do this guide for a specific reason for people who are after level 60 because of moving into doing dungeons. Dungeons right now are the thing to do to get your gear score up, get your expertise up, get your gypsum, a lot of the stuff that you need after you get level 60 to progress into the end game. 200 stone cutting is gonna allow you to be able to start doing these dungeons pretty often, especially if you are in a company because your company and you can do orb for orb and then end up doing five or six or whatever, however many dungeons you guys end up wanting to do but this is gonna allow you to do that. You can end up making these orbs once a week. For the orbs that you make, you, you can end up making two per week. Um, so Genesis, and it's the same with uh, Lazarus as well. I have not made my Lazarus orbs, but I wanted to show you guys the things that I found to make money while you're doing this stone cutting stuff. And these corrupted lodestones are selling like crazy on the market right now and they're fairly easy to make if you don't mind going out and doing corruption portals. These corrupted fragments shards and crystals from these uh, portals the higher up and level the portals the higher up of these you will get but you need two of the corrupted crystals to end up making a corrupted lodestone it's not a ton it does take time but you'll end up making 1.5k ish depending on your server everybody's trying to do dungeons and these are required to make the orbs um, so if you're starting to get excess of these dude start selling them because it's going to make you tons of money it's going to add another couple thousand depending on how many of these you can do in 24 hours um, it's going to add to that 24 hour count from doing all your refining 24 hour cooldown stuff and then also there are inside of these you you end up needing asmodium chisels um, for both of these and then these rune stones as well so all of these things these top three things are going to be things that you can sell whenever you have access of the rune stones aren't that difficult to make actually i will show you guys what it looks like to collect a uh, lodestone because it's just a bunch of lodestone and then you guys know most of you know where to get the stone from um, but they're just little stone rocks outside of the, the cities so these rune stones are going for a decent amount of money as well they also have a cooldown you can make 10 of these per day but this is definitely important if you guys are wanting to make some extra cash you can do this they're selling for 1.2k it cost 450 gold to make inside of the faction store so the fastest way to actually get the faction tokens is to do pvp missions in an area and then once you turn those in you end up getting massive amounts of faction tokens and then you can end up making these and just selling them so you're putting in 450 gold but you're making 1200 so um, just check out the market see what that looks like for you guys so so this is the uh, 24 hour cooldown. You can make 10 of them and they go for uh, around this price. So you can see 169. So you sell 10 of them, you're making another 1.6K. So this right here is Brightwood. 
what I do is I go out of the west gate, the northwest gate, and uh, I come up here to this part and grab these lodestone, walk down here, grab this lodestone, stay along this little, uh, wall right here, and then grab these lodestone, uh, continue to walk down south into this cave, grab these lodestone, and then I'll walk back up this path um, and then cut across here, and I'll come up here and then grab these lodestone up here, start up here, grab these ones below it, and then the ones below that. And then after that, you'll jump down this little ledge and grab these lodestone, and then you continue to go south uh, to the west of this lake and then grab these lodestone and then across the little waterfall you'll grab these lodestone and then you can walk back up here and grab these lodestone and then after that you'll go south and if you stay on the west side of this mountain right here um, you'll be able to climb up the mountain there's actually a gold node right there that you can slap as well um, and then you'll go back around uh, towards the north side to get up the rest of this mountain and then once you get to the top you'll grab this lodestone right here you'll jump down grab this lodestone you'll uh, like kind of just scale along the wall right here, grab this lodestone, jump down and then grab these this lodestone here and then walk over here, grab this lodestone here. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is y'all's rewards for doing this. Tier one box, you end up getting two pristine onyxes. Second tier, the last one, um, you end up getting sandpaper, you end up getting a crap ton of gems. So that's what you'll be looking forward to whenever you get your aptitude boxes and what this stone cutting is going to be doing for you when it comes to gems. I really hope that helps you guys. If you guys have found that content helpful, smack that like button, hey, leave some comments and what you're doing in stone crafting so that that way I can actually help you guys with anything that you guys need to be helped with um, and kind of get a grid for what kind of videos I want to make next to, to be able to provide some content for you guys. This is one of the many videos that I plan on coming out with very soon. So if you're wanting to catch those videos, make sure to subscribe so you get notified and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.